inverted, narcissistic, and most importantly, completely pointless. Come waste an hour of your week with The Starting Block, Friday nights Australian time at dlive.tv forward slash The Starting Block. Get in touch with us on Twitter, at The Starting Block, no K at the end. Also, subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts or iTunes by searching for The Starting Block, or one word, or on Podbean at startingblock.podbean.com. Join the Blockheads, tuning in, in their millions, right around the world. You're listening to The Starting Block on TAVshow.com. The following program is recommended for mature individuals and may contain material unsuitable for morons, cretins, and dishwipes. If you are a moron or a member of the PTL club, Please turn off your radio, because we don't need any more stupid, narrow-minded, pencil-neck geeks who wouldn't know the First Amendment if it came up and bit them on the butt. Thank you. Okie dokie, roll em. another week big show as always we've got story times we've got dollars we've got wet we've got russia we've got journalism we've got cottonwood cummins all that and much much more here on the block situation we're in it together to all of you on the front lines those of you turning a footstool a walk and a pitchfork into a home gym those of you who have given your housemates a mental breakdown because you decided lockdown was a great time to learn the keyboard and the only thing you can play after eight weeks is chopsticks over and over and over again and those of you who are homeschooling and are now understanding the question you used to harass your maths teacher with of when the fuck are we ever going to need to know this in the real world is coming back to bite you on the ass. Just remember, like a 1990s Australian sitcom, we're all in this together. The days may be long, but in times like this, you can rest assured we will be here to waste an hour of your week, Friday nights Australian time, at dlive.tv slash the starting block. So take care, social distance, whack on a mask, and subscribe to our show on iTunes. It may not cure coronavirus, but it sure will help us with our rankings. And isn't that really the most important thing right now? Losses TAVshow.com's game. You're listening to The Starting Block. Hey, welcome to the Starting Block for another week. 
Give it up myself, Bruno, and I'm joined by man who's celebrating the big two-year anniversary of just two more weeks, people. My co-captain Damo, how are we, sir? Very good, Greeno. Good evening to you, boys, girls, listeners, blockheads, millions yeah. around the world, fuckwits, morons out there. How are you going, everyone? Welcome aboard. We're back, Greeno. A couple of weeks off. Do you feel refreshed, ready to go? We had, we had one week off. One week off. Yeah, but there's yeah, yeah, but if we have one week off, that means we haven't done the show for two weeks. Two weeks, but that's not two weeks off. That's you know one week of regular rest, one week off. Why do you have back to, to it? Why do you have to complicate everything? No, it's no, it's still the math, mate. Just doing the still math. Math. It's been two weeks since we've Wait, done a fucking show. Okay. Give me that last show. Fair call. <laughs> all right. Uh, <laughs> fair call. After all that, quick, quick, quick bit of a uh, pre-show, if we will. Uh, nice. we, were, we were talking before the show, mm. and I had to do a quick mic check where mm. I said, "Look, can you hear me coughing my guts up mm. if, if I step this far away from the mic? You know, like very clearly, mm. that's still very loud." Yeah. And you're explaining to me, you know, hot keys. I can set all that up. That's my homework for the coming week. Mm. Uh, I realise there's literally a mute button <laughs> on Discord that I can just. So let's Bye, test it. Gary. Let's, let's test it, shall we? So in one, two, three, I'm going to mute myself. I'm going to give myself a bit of a cough. Right. Tell me if you can hear me. Okay. Any cough? Bravo. You figured it out, mate. Nice, <laughs> Gary. So no hockey needed. I can literally just hit the mute button. Well yeah. done. Are you, but are you clicking it, though? Like, are you clicking yeah, it? Yeah, I had to click it. I had to click it. Yeah, see, so that's, why, that's why I suggested the hotkey, because the hotkey is much better. You can just press a button on the keyboard, and you don't have to, like, find the mouse pointer and make sure it's on the thing and click it. Well, the mouse pointer's like, already on the thing, so we're good to go. And secondly, my keyboard is further away than my mouse. Is it really? So it makes sense to just touch the mouse. Touch the mouse. Just touch it. Uh, Damo, uh, yeah, I mentioned uh, to kick off the show, two years, two years since we, yeah, we first went into corona lockdown. It's true. So, yeah. so two more weeks and we're all good to go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> two, just two more weeks, guys. And they just continued saying two more weeks for the yeah. t- continue every two weeks for two years. Well, now, we have, like, in the last, I'm going to say six weeks to two months, We've like I've definitely noticed a relaxation across the board. There's no more masking, really. Uh, I would say at my local shops, there's like fifty fifty people who are masking who aren't mm-hmm. versus. There's no one scanning in anywhere. There's no like QR code registration. There's like, no point for that anymore. Nah. No, it's waste time. But then yeah. I was, you know, then I was obviously green. You know, flicking the news, you know, just earlier, and of course it's like the headline of something like. Government ramping up COVID response ahead of winter <laughs> as uh, no, no, no. cases expected to soar. So it's like, well, now it's not even based on. So what's <laughs> now it's not even like as a reaction to anything. Like now we're preemptively going to fucking make people scan in and lock down. And no, you missed the, you missed the hot off the press though, sir. Right. No, now they've gone the reverse. Oh. So the new ruling is if you're in a house with someone who has the Rona, <laughs> Yes. You don't need to you don't need to isolate anymore. You're oh, all good. Is that no, right? Nice, Gary. Gary. Yeah, because uh, before they were coming around to people's houses, were they not? And you know, taking them, removing them from the environment, Greeno, and you'd have to go and stay in some facility to keep your family safe from you. Yeah. Yeah. So that's good. Now stuff. instead of instead of isolating, it's just fucking spread it. We're up to um quarter of a million cases in New South Wales a month now. Yeah, really? So remember, remember and, the good and old days yet life and yet life goes on. Like, we like it's almost done days we had three cases. We go into a statewide lockdown for six months. Yeah. Now, quarter of a million a month, mm. and lo and behold, uh, business continues. Yeah. So would you, would you, Greeno, do you think COVID knows that there's an election around the corner? Or I, I posted that tweet a little bit earlier. <laughs> Did you? I said, when they said, oh, no, now uh, <laughs> if you're, you're in a house with someone who's COVID positive, no need to isolate for you anymore. Mm. And I'm like, was that based on health advice or polling numbers? Yeah. I'm guessing the latter. Yeah. Uh, it's sneaky, sne- sneaky suspicion. I know we don't want to, we, we're, we're very open minded here on this show. Yes. But we're very pro very, science as well. We love seems science. very convenient <laughs> that uh, just as, as uh, elections coming up, suddenly it's like, nah, do whatever you want, guys. Mm. We're not the bad guy anymore. Uh, we're the good guy. We're letting you have your freedom back. Sure. And then, yeah, watch well, that. And there's, uh, and there's also well, the other the other side to it is Greeno, of course. It's, uh, you know, the people who I think, you know, they've been vindicated now, the people who said all along that lockdowns aren't the answer and it's not going to do anything except hurt the economy, really, because we've experienced two years of lockdowns. And apparently the, the point of the lockdown was to keep the case numbers low. 
So mm-hmm. the case Which is worked. so the case. Yeah, but who gives a fuck? Because now there's two hundred and fifty thousand cases apparently, and yet, month, yeah. and yet, life goes on. So people are still going to work. What do you know? The stores are open, and everyone's carrying on. No one's scanning in. If people are a little uncomfortable, they're wearing a mask, and people are taking their own precautions, just like grown ups nice, should. So Gary. well done to everybody out there, because here you are. Uh, you had to endure two years of lockdowns to just to just to at the end of it. it was it all worth it, Greeno? Because now there's two hundred fifty thousand cases. Everything's open. So what was the fucking point? What was the difference? May as well have well, done it back then. Well, life life goes on, except for the six million plus people that have died. Uh, no, they would have died anyway, no, not, Greeno. <laughs> not so much for them. Yeah, not so much for them. But life goes on for the remaining world yeah. population. Yeah, I think uh, I think the life expectancy for anybody under seventy five is somewhere in the range of ninety nine point nine nine eight percent or thereabouts. So you know, if you were over seventy five, you had a good run. What is it like? Ninety percent of people who died, quote unquote, of COVID, were actually died, quote unquote, with COVID. They've discovered in a recent study. So, mm. yeah, you know, uh, a lot of people have died. I don't want to sound heartless or anything like that. But again, I ask you, what was the fucking point if two years worth of lockdowns to just get at the end of it, have all the cases anyway, and have everything? And so, what did you actually prevent? All you did was shove everyone in a box for two years, and no, then you came out, and you know, you're dealing with it anyway. No, 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 no mate. You, no? You're being you're being silly here. Oh, mate. am you're, I? You're missing, oh, okay. you're missing you're missing the big picture. Really. We, we also put fucking shits and tons and trillions of dollars <laughs> yes. into Pfizer's pocket. Yeah, that's no, right. Get scary. to the big picture. Um, Think about the real are, victims uh, here, Greeno. Yeah. The CEOs. <laughs> exactly. Those Pfizer bonuses aren't going to pay themselves, mate. Yeah. Um, now, I just want to talk uh, a little bit serious, if we can, for a quick moment. I know we're going to get to Russia in a moment, but Got I want to talk to. some serious shit. I'm rushing to get to that one. Before we get to know. Russia. Uh, Damo, it's been a bit of a rough week mm. here, uh, in Australia, the eastern seaboard, inundated with floods. Yeah. Uh, rough couple know, of weeks. Rough couple of weeks, 100%. Now, it, it got me thinking again. A couple of weeks since the last show. Yeah. I'm, I'm hanging for the good old days, Damo. Right. Remember we were in like... The biggest drought in Australian history. Yeah, what was it like? Eight years, ten years, something. Yeah, like that? Eight, yeah. The good old days where we were in a, in a crippling drought and the whole country was on fire. <laughs> the good old days, Damo. When you just when the house was underwater to this week, yep. when you just praying for the good old days of of drought and uh, the whole country on fire. Yeah, just praying for please God come through and you know burn my fucking soaked house and my ruined home to the ground. Dry it out. Please. Yeah. Well, I had, I had my car uh, turn into a swimming pool at one point. Did you uh, leave a window week. down in the driveway? No, that was the worst no possible fortnight to leave a window down in the Probably driveway. Probably not a good idea. No, no, no window down. Just uh, I don't know what happened, but the car was full of water. Really? Uh, also had a leaky, leaky roof. So it was a situation of like a little bit of fire mm. would have been good about now. Yeah. The drought would have been good about now. Dry this bastard out. Just turn it uh, to rust instantly. I yeah, do agree. Exactly. I do agree with the sentiment of just quietly, you know, in your in your quiet moments, Greeno, maybe with a nice brandy and a cigarette, just hoping mm-hmm. for a fireball to wipe out all mankind. You know, I I, I can understand yeah. that sentimentality definitely. Mm. Yeah. Every now and then. I mean, don't be psycho or anything. Don't think about You're it crazy. constantly. No. Yeah, but just yeah, every now and then. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Uh, let's get to the important issues, Damo. Let's talk a bit of Russia. We don't talk serious shit on the show very often, no. but we're going to cover the big issues here. Uh, serious, serious issues. Well, yeah. World War Three started while we we're off. Mm. Once again, uh, since we stopped doing the show, and I don't, I don't want to say there's a link between uh, mm. the things, but since we stopped doing the show a couple of weeks back, yep. we've had uh, the biggest flood in about 100 years in Australia. Mm-hmm. We've also had World War Three on the precipice. That's right. Now, I'm not saying they're linked. But clearly, but <laughs> because we weren't here, obviously. Yeah, those two big like, crazy things happened in the world mm. happened, just happened, circumstantially happened to occur whilst we were away. Nice, um, Gary. Coincidence, you know, uh, I'll leave it to our six viewers to decide. No, clearly, but, gre- clearly, Greeno, without our steady hand guiding the world, both well, spiritually and culturally, it falls. Mm. It falls to shit. It turns into exactly. shit the moment we turn our back. So now we know how God feels, obviously, don't we, Greeno? <laughs> like when we look upon the world, and you know, when they're tearing each other apart, He must be heartbroken, God, all mm. the time with what we're looking doing. down. Do you reckon that was a God's kind of frustration of like, normally I get my block fixed about now. Mm. What can I do to keep myself entertained? Ah, yeah. uh, let's put a bit of water over here. Yeah. Let's put a bit of like uh, nuclear warfare over here. Slice a bit that- of Ukraine off. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, a little bit, just a little bit. Um, 
But let's let's talk about Russia. Let's talk about the big issues because, mm. uh, thankfully, like the world has taken a stand, Damo. Mm. The world has taken a stand. The world's not going to fucking. The world's not going to take bullies anymore. This is True. fucking. This is not the old days. This is not nineteen eighties movies, Damo. Nope. Where Karate Kid. We need a Mister Miyagi to come into this bitch and fucking. Put put the bullies back in their place yep. with a bit of uh, wax on wax off mm. is what I'm thinking. Yep. And and there's a few different ways we're we're, we're always inventive in this world. Yeah. You know we could go in with like a, a crane kick mm. if we could to uh, to Russia. Yeah. But how many how that. many more are you going to crowbar into this? How many, <laughs> how many more Karate Kid references are you going to squeeze in <laughs> to this fucking to this? I feel I feel, I feel like the throw is going longer than it should. Pure, like, it's just purely a vehicle now for your Karate Kid references, I think. Nice! Okay, it could be. It could be. Um, but, look... You know, Putin, just... you know the, the, the president of Ukraine, Green, I don't know if you heard this or not, was rumoured to have said, pain does not exist in this dojo, does it? Exactly. Yeah, uh, they Scott, said no, Zelensky. Okay. Nice, That's it. Strike right first. Yeah. Strike right first, exactly. Yeah. Uh, Putin knows what's going on here. He now... <laughs> So uh, the world has had to take a stance. Now you could go a couple of different ways. You could go, look, we're gonna we're gonna go and support the Ukraine. We're gonna send our troops over. We're gonna send over aircraft. We're gonna send over tanks. Mm. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna do what we can when it comes to our missile. We'll send over weapons. We could do that. Or demo. We're also green. Are you missing a whole big slice of the community? They see guns, tanks, armaments, supplies, food. That's all well and good. But I wouldn't say that's the real stuff. I wouldn't say that that's the stuff that really matters. You what think about more important things? Definitely, there's definitely more important things, Greeno. Like, for example, I don't know, have you, how many celebrities have you seen on Twitter this week? For example, donning the Ukraine flag. Now, that's definitely going to be having an effect, I think. Well, that's definitely going to show them. Well, when uh, I can guarantee, when Vlad gets up and takes his morning dump mm. and he's scrolling through his Twitter feed, You'll just be and fuming. all he's seeing, yeah. all he's seeing is uh, Ukraine colors and flags in people's Twitter profiles. Fuck me. Is that going to send him in a bit of a shock? Mm. His aides will come in and see him perched on the bo- on the on the bowl, Greeno, on the mm. toilet, and just see a big vein popping out of his forehead. It's not like, happy, Mister President. He's okay. Yeah. No, he's not okay. If you see this shit on Twitter, mm. you see terrible stuff. So you know that's important. I've also liked Greeno how the uh, world, the, the the global mega corporations have banded together in the way that they do. Obviously, you know they care about the little guy, Greeno. They, they care about you and me and the peasants out here. So, you know, they've done the right thing and banded together and they've started to put, you know, independent sanctions on I like it. On Russia. Do so, what you can do. Yeah, because I mean stepping up. Right. So I mean, you know, denying the Russian people of things mm-hmm. because of what's going on. I mean, clearly that's what the good guy would do, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah, well, you gotta so, have a villain, you gotta have a heel, you gotta have a face tamer. That's right. That's, that's that's very true. We're gonna have Greeno kind of uh we're gonna have televised live Skyped fucking aid concerts in Kiev six months from now with the headlined by the fucking Foo Fighters. You watch, mark my words. <laughs> Save this post. It'll be rock live for Ukraine or some shit. Hundred percent, there will be. And Coldplay will be there. Foo Fighters yeah. will be there. Right, Foo Fighters are everywhere. They're, they're wherever they can get their, their nose in. That's it. They'll jump on in Foo Fighters. That's right. Only vaccinated people allowed to attend Foo Fighters concerts. Incidentally, Green. I don't know if you know. Of that. course, safety first, sir. Yeah, we would have come full circle. Rage Against the Machine will be doing the Ukraine aid concert, Green. <laughs> <laughs> in, in six nice, months from now, Gary. only vaccinated people are allowed to attend. Uh, and I'll dedicate it to Pfizer, Greeno. That's going to be the pearler. So they, these things so are no important. Rage, so no rage against the vaccine. Rage against the vaccine. Very nice, good. Gary. No rage. We love the vaccine, Greeno. So mm. these kinds of things, obviously, you know, I think are more important than guns and tanks and that kind of useless shit. And when I think of corporate activism, I smile, and then I think to stories like this, Greeno. Yeah. Wool- Woolworth's Chicken Kiev to become Chicken Kiev. Nice, <laughs> Gary. Fucking fuck no. The supermarket. So this is the biggest supermarket. It's I guess it would be like Walmart, except with less stuff. It's more like for food, right? Yeah. Food food, and toiletries and shit. So the supermarket announced on Thursday, it's it's like a Publix, I guess. Its own brand of chicken Kiev and similarly similarly named products in the deli section, Greeno, your old stomping ground in the deli. So Mm -hmm. we've got the right man on the show for this. That's it, yeah. Uh will be changed. Woolworths. Has taken a stance. <laughs> taken a stance, Greeno. That's a quote, by the way. From nice, the story. Gary! Woolworths has taken a stance on the Russian-Ukraine conflict 
by changing the name of some products so it no longer uses the Russian spelling. I've got an idea, Greeno. Why don't we go with the fucking English spelling for a change? Yeah, nice, see how that What's the English spelling of Kiev, though? I don't know. I bet it's, I bet it's the same as the Russian. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> so we I'm can pretty sure it. the English spelling is K-I-E-V, yeah. Kiev. Yep. So we'll just go with that then, because, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it would make sense, wouldn't it? It makes sense to spell Kiev like Kiev is spelt. Yes, yeah. correct. Yeah, in English. Yeah. Like, I mean, the rest of the article's in English. <laughs> why, mm-hmm. why can't the name of the, the, the dinner thing be English as well? I don't yeah. understand the problem here. The supermarket mm-hmm. announced Thursday its own brand of Chicken Kiev and similarly named products in the deli section will now be changed to Chicken Kiev to recognise Kiev. the true name of the Ukrainian capital <sighs> city. No, I don't okay. care. I don't care how much these fucks try to shove Kiev down my throat. I am never going to call it Kiev. Never. No, it's, it's Kiev. always going to be Kiev. Uh, Damo, I'd love for the ultimate irony to mm. be that the chicken Kiev mm. are made in Russia. <laughs> like the chicken they sell, they have a company, Woolworths, yeah. a little factory in Russia. That's where they get the little chickens. Yeah. They create the Kievs and send them on over. But they're like, hey, we're going to show, we're going to show them. We're going to call them Kievs. What instead. about what about this Greeno? What you know? What what if the chicken Kiev loving community got together on this? We mm-hmm. start, here's my idea. We start a petition to, and we, we address it to the president of the Ukraine because he doesn't have anything going on at the moment, so it should get to him fine. Yeah. So we, we're going to start a petition and say to them, look, if you don't want your city to be, you know, recognized with this delicious, you know, tasty, fucking succulent, buttery dinner that everybody likes, why yeah. don't we go out and find ourselves another city to name it after them? Yeah, different. Let's just fucking move it. Why don't we start calling them Chicken Moscows? Yeah. Huh? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck them. That'll show them. Nice, Gary. <laughs> ungrateful, ungrateful cunts and Kiev greeter. That's that should be the headline. <laughs> Chicken Moscows. I like them. Chicken Moscow uh, from now on. From, from Next time forward. you're out for a hot fucking counter meal at the local, yeah. I want you to go up and ask for a Chicken Moscow, Chicken Moscow. with chips. That's right. I like it. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Look. Uh, that that's fucking that, that's that, activism personally, right there. That's how you change the world. I think that's gonna scare. I think it's gonna scare. Like between yeah. the the uh, users avatars, mm. between the chicken keeves, chicken keeves. Um, yeah. I think that's gonna scare them enough. But I think the world can do more. And thankfully, mm. uh, our good friends at Pornhub have yeah. uh, taken it to the next level, uh, where the Russian users who attempted to visit Pornhub were quite literally cock blocked. By a message that told them that the content has been stopped along with the Ukrainian flag and a message of Ukrainian support. So now. Oh, yeah. But now the uh, the good Russian people, none of their fault, not their fault, cannot uh, jump on the net and whack off to a bit of uh, MILF porn mm. on Pornhub anymore. Mm. They get a little bit of Ukrainian flag. Now, uh, that may work for people that are a bit perverse and are into some kinky shit like Ukrainian flags. Mm-hmm. That might still get them off. Now, true. putting that subsector aside, yep. there's going to be a lot of pissed off Russians. Very true. You can't jump off to Pornhub from there. Now, if you're trying to uh, frustrate a nation into diplomacy and peace, mm. Sexual frustration is probably not the best idea. <laughs> so we're denying them. We're denying them McDonald's, aren't we? So mm-hmm. we've taken the well, Maccas un- away. Only after public pressure. So Maccas were like, no, no, we're still sticking with Russia because we get some good cashola there. Right. And then people were like, well, fuck you, Maccas. And then Maccas were like, ah, oh, well, fair call. Uh, we're going to join the boycott. After they realised there was a bit of a, a public dismay at their stance to stick with the Russians. Right. Greeno, I don't know. Uh, I think we can show this. I have just come across, because what you have to understand about Russia is there's a Russian version of everything anyway. So there's a Russian version of Google. I forget what it's, it's called, Yantex or something, or Spandex. I don't fucking know. Okay. Uh, there's a Russian version of WhatsApp. I think Telegram is the Russian version of WhatsApp or something like okay. that. So Russians do have their own version of everything. So uh, I just thought, well, I'll look up the Russian version of Pornhub, Greeno, and I think I came across ah. it. I think I found it here. Uh- Okay, let's have a look here at what we're looking at. Could be a bit of mercy. here. Yeah, it could be a little... Take your children out there. Oh, look at that. There it is. There you go. Oh, nice one. It's getting me worked up, I look must at, admit. Look at those guns, baby. Mm-mm. Mm. That's right. Okay, flatten those cities. 
That's, that's foreplay right there, uh, Russian style. <laughs> I tell you what, I know who I want to be invaded by. Am I right, Greeno? Mm. Hey? Hey? How do you like that? Yeah. Well <laughs> yeah. All right, so, uh, so we, they've come up with, the world's come up with a few different options. So we've got the, the avatars, we've got the Pornhub, mm. and we've got the Keeps. The Keeps. But if that's not going to stop it, the Aussies. The Aussies want their fucking moment in the sun. That's right. Uh, they're like, look, we, we feel we haven't contributed enough mm. to the Keeps. And the avatars, blah blah blah. Yep. So they, they they've decided. Look, we're, we're going to hit Vlad where it hurts. We're going to axe the Russian meerkat ads <laughs> for Budget Direct. Nice, Gary. Uh, meerkat ads axed during the news, Grant. So this was a live call. Somebody did this on the fly. You know, Kerry yeah. Packer style. Get this shit off my television. Exactly. So someone, someone threw the phone at their fucking at fucking. What's his name? What was his name for Kerry Kerry Packer's whipping dog, Greeno? <laughs> Doug Mulray. No, not Doug Mulray. He's fucking like his right hand man who he just berates constantly. Oh, I wouldn't know that. Oh, David, I think his name is. Anyway, okay. David something. So anyway, he threw the phone at David. Meerkat ads acts during the news. Quote, compare the market will no longer run its adverts featuring Russian meerkats during news bulletins. Group. Nice, Gary. Mm. Were, were the, uh, <laughs> do you reckon the advertisers were concerned that the, the Russian meerkat was an infidel? Yeah. Was going to. Try, try and convert some some Aussie comrades. Oh hell yeah! There we go. Can yes. we can we combine the Russian porn with the meerkats, Greeno? With the meerkats, that's that's what's really going to get the Russians pumped up. Maybe we should just go out to the break with a little bit of Russian porn for you. All right, let's go to the break with a bit of Russian porn, shall we? Actually, no. Can you pull up a bit of the Russian meerkats instead? <laughs> so we give, give them the Russian meerkat. Give, give them, the, give them a, a solid farewell. Can we find some Russian meerkats online? Oh, Just the, the appropriate way, because I think if we're going to hit them, we need to t- we need to tell them what they're missing. Hit them where it hurts, and unless, Greedo. And unless we show them, like, hey, here's the good Aussie fucking Russian meerkat shtick that you're now missing. Mm. We're taking away, and if you don't, if you don't re- withdraw from Ukraine, otherwise we're going to stop playing these ads during Australian news. Yep. Big smacks. Big smacks. Uh, if that's not going to set the Russians straight, I don't know what will. Let's have a look, shall we? Okay. This is the meerkat ads. That These are the ads that have been taken off because fuck Russia, Greeno, apparently. Yeah. Okay. Oh, hang on. What are we? Where's our sound here? Why is our sound not working? Uh, there we go. That's better. All right. I am Alexander, founder of CompareTheMeerkat.com, <laughs> where we compare meerkats. Size hobbies, you know, but lately we get many people looking for car insurance. People looking well, for This compar- thing definitely looks like it's about to uh, invade a nuclear facility. <laughs> Doesn't it? <laughs> no, <Nice>, it's scary! <laughs> CompareTheMarket.com. Oh, market. I cannot cool. find you cheap car insurance. This, these do not sound. Can I just pause it for a moment? Please. This accent does not sound Russian. No, it sounds like he's Italian or something. Yeah, <laughs> something or Bulgarian. Bulgarian. Bulgaria. It sounds like a. Uh, who's the guy who's the played g- Dracula? I don't know. Bulgaria. Like, Hungary. No, I don't know. One Hungaria, of the, that's the one. one of the Garyus. <laughs> Bella Lugosi. This fucking meerkat sounds like Bella Lugosi, who's from Hungary, I believe. Uh, it's not Hungary. It's not. I. It's. It's. The Hungary, line is sorry. Hungaria from fucking Spinal Tap. When you know, is it Spinal right. Tap or The Simpsons? Where he's like, yeah, and we're also big in the other Garia. What's his name? Hungary. <laughs> <Hungaria. laughs> like, that's right. That's correct. <laughs> well done, so nice, Gary. Come Thank you, to nice, compare Gary. Nice, Gary. Nice, Gary. Easy way to save on car insurance. Yeah. Please go to compare them. Well, mark. thank God they took this off television. We're saving the fucking world out here, Greeno. <laughs> Fantastic stuff. Do you like your novelty comedy songs organic, handmade with painstaking care, put into every note? Well, look no further than Irrational Times. Using only the finest instruments to create an experience that your ears will thank you for later, Irrational Times attempts to elevate the whimsy to a desirable level. New songs and sketches every week. So check it out. There's a place that we can go to watch old things. All the warm, fuzzy member berries it brings. It's a special little spot tucked away on D-Live. Enjoy the joy of Pessie. Can't be old movies and old cartoons. 
We hope to see you over there very soon. It's our special little spot, tucked away on D Live. Enjoy the joy of Pessy. When we were kids and there wasn't any school, we'd sit and watch all the best cartoons. Eating cereal until it was noon. We never thought that 30 years later it'd still be cool. Saturday night and cheesy movies. The ones that used to show us boobies. It's our special little spot tucked away on D-Live. Enjoy the joy of Pessy. Enjoy the joy of Pessy. Enjoy the joy of Pessy. with less than 3% sport content. It's the starting block on TAVshow.com. Back yeah, we're back. Yeah, there you go. No, you ruined my bit, Green. I just did the fucking Twitter plug. Now I'm going to have to do it again. All right, listen. I heard, I heard the beep beep. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they refer to the industry as dead air. Yeah. Uh, Demo, uh, Bella Lagos. That was a born... plug, my man. That was a fucking nah, subtle, subtle. New, new no... twi- the new Twitter promo. New Twitter promo. <laughs> 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 uh, well done. I'm, I'm fucked see. for next week, though. Think I'm just gonna yeah. have to. Fl- think I'm just gonna have to flash the logo <laughs> up on the screen for a second. <laughs> Not even. No, no, fuck that. Can you find the Morse code for like Twitter? <laughs> That'll go longer than the sound I just played. Yeah, that's the point. Yeah. That's good. Uh, Bella Lugosi, born in Romania in mm. 1882. Who? Bella Lugosi, the dude I was talking about. Sounds like the Meerkats. Guy oh, played Dracula right. in the original Dracula films. Ah. Uh, Brad, Brad in the chat, Greeno, the Earth Reporter. A couple of people in the chat. Jimbo's in the chat. Dave's in the chat. We've got a couple of people. Me and Jim having chat. a good chat about uh, Major League Baseball coming back yeah. earlier. Well, hang on. Don't oh, interrupt sorry. B.E.'s magic oh. moment in the sun. Oh, sorry. Cause... I don't want to interrupt. No, B.E.'s. Yeah, we don't do. We, never interrupt, show, we yeah. never interrupt on this show, We never interrupt on this show. B.E. said the meerkats sound like a sophisticated Bruno Lucia Greeno. <laughs> nice, oh. Gary. Nice we touch. need a chicky, chicky babes. Chicky babes. Got to get that on chicky the board. Babes. Exactly. Definitely need a Bruno the Chicky Chicky babes. Okay. Uh, Damo, uh, quick story time. Yeah, if we may, so. I like stories about pinatas. We talked about the floods here in uh, in New South Wales and Queensland as well uh, over the last couple of weeks. And it, it led to, to, to the wife who normally has to go to work a couple of hours trick there and back. Got the situation where she had to like work from home. Mm. Now, apparently, for the last two years, even though it's a pandemic and she works with elderly people, mm. she couldn't work from home. But magically, it's raining and they're like, yeah, well, if you can't get into work, we'll find a way for you to work from home. Well, I, I just assumed that she was working in you know, a hands on kind of role. Now, she works office. So, well, so why would, why would you have to go in there this whole That's time? Been That's been my argument bizarre. for such a long time. That's it's very nuts. bizarre. Yeah. Very, very bizarre. It's been a frustration of mine for two years now. But anyway. She drives and and with petrol cost him two twenty a and, litre now. And now there's like, two hey, now there's two hundred now there's two hundred and fifty thousand cases, Greta. Now it's like, oh you can stay home if you want. I mean, yeah, yeah stay home now, God. stay home now and don't spend money on petrol. That's the key thing. <laughs> no, no petrol Gary. money. Because okay. the petrol money now exceeds what she earns. Mm. So it's it's like bit on drive to work, it's gonna cost you more. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, Americans so, at the moment are complaining about their petrol prices. Yeah, but ours have always been like double yours already. So yeah. ours are fucking ridiculous. And oh, because ours are insane. because the whole population lives like around the coastline of Australia, which is about the size of the mainland USA in the first place, landmass wise. Mm-hmm. Like, can you imagine how much fuel needs to get burned to take one to take something from one place to another? Like, it's ridiculous. Oh, yeah, and we don't even make it. We don't have our own refineries here. We have to mm-hmm. bring everything in. 
So the day exactly. that the day that you know Joe provokes China into getting involved, they're just going to shut off the shipping lines to us, and we'll basically run out of fuel within three days. Uh, sweet dreams, everyone. Nice, yeah. Gary. Enjoy. The whole country uh, grinds to a halt within three days. <laughs> so yeah. I had to go fill up my car uh, today, and I was like, look. Uh, I'll fill up as much as I saw a 220 a litre. I'm like, get fucked, 220 a litre? That's insane. Mm. It was 75 cents a litre literally a year ago. Really? Um, yeah. Well, at the height of the pandemic, remember fuel prices came back to like vintage uh, 1990 prices? That's that was right. right. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah good. good news, everybody. While it's illegal for you to drive anywhere, we're going to put the petrol prices low just to tease a screener. Right down. Just to give us hope. That we'll, now know. we're back out driving, open up 220 a litre. That's right. So I was like, oh, <laughs> I'm going to fill up, like fill up my car as much as I can. Mm. And then I got to like 99 bucks and the pump was still going. I'm like, fuck that. I'm going to stop here so I don't have to put in my PIN number because I don't yeah. like doing the PIN number. I've got I a, I like a stories point. about pinatas. I've got to interrupt your story for a moment, Garino, because right. I, I, just to give you a, not one of these. Nice, Gary. Maybe for different reasons, but I also, I refuse to spend more than $100 on petroleum. Yeah. Like, So there's something in me. Principle. When it gets to, yeah, when it gets to like 99, I'm like, pull that sucker out. It's, it's yeah, it's like pulling out before you come, Greeno. It's yeah. like, no, I'm not. <laughs> I am not giving you what's what I've got here. Like it's going yeah. on the floor. Fuck it, and you let it dribble on the floor, <laughs> and you put the pump back. Like it's not going in the tank. So right yeah, on the Bowser's chest. That's right. Exactly. So I just want. I to like gonna... stories about pinatas. Back you up. Um, was dumbfounded that yeah, almost cost me a hundred dollars. And so I then hopped in the car, saw the about the the fuel gauge not go up to full. I'm like, that's unbelievable. That's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Um. But then went and spent like $180 at the bottler. Yeah, because so you had the like, money because you didn't put more than $100 <laughs> the worth the of juice. I, I refused to put more than $100, but then I went like, oh, Jim Beam, two bottles for $150. Bucks. Yep. Better get that. That's right. Um, yeah, if someone turns value. someone turns to you and says, geez, these petrol prices are out of control, and you're like, I oh, know, I could only afford to buy four fucking bottles of Jack Daniels this week. <laughs> exactly. God, Unbelievable. Shit, um, so anyway, the wife has been working, but then she had to go back into work and she's like, look, can I borrow, with the rain's still going, can I borrow a wet weather jacket? Okay. And I'm like, look, I've only got one wet weather jacket, which is my baseball jacket, right? Mm. Which is fine, but I've got to drop the kids yeah, to and on. from don't daycare. You have, don't you have like a big city, uh, you know, a city fucking trench? I've got a big long fucking, you know, keeps you dry coat to wear around, you know, like a fucking- I don't. Well, you no, know, like well, a Morpheus from Matrix screener, you know, those long I don't, fucking... I don't have that big long trench coat. What? So- All your days so of like, travelling in the city for work and you don't own one of those because everybody in the city owns one of them. Uh, I didn't need one because I worked right across the road from the train station. Yeah, fair So enough. I just walked across with an umbrella. Um, but I did have a baseball jacket that is like a wet weather jacket. Okay. So I'm like, I've got that, but I said, but then I've still got to drop the kids off mm. to daycare school. Mm. So I kind of need the jacket because I'm getting pissed on constantly no. while I'm waiting for the kids. No, right? Greeno. Sorry to interrupt your story, but I'm going to I like this. stories yeah. about pinatas. That, that, I think, would have been the the absolute perfect time to go down to the school with the fucking guns out in the tank top, Greeno, and the Orlando Magic. Nice. Shirt. Can, can watch in shirt. Pissing down watch rain. Shirt. Yeah. Pissing down rain. <laughs> yeah. Abs, abs looking fresh. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Just no, shirtless, Greeno, in the rain. Are you looking shirtless, you reckon? Cut in the middle, man. No, Get no, definitely off. a tank top. you got to go the ah. tank top. Yeah, but it's got to be oh, sticking to your abs. Right? Good news, uh, tank, tank top update, Damo. Mm -hmm. Ord ordered two fresh ones for this summer. Nice. So you're preparing early this nice. time around. Preparing you, early. You've you, learned you, you things. Shoot on me. You're like, bro, how many, how many tank tops you got? I'm like, like three. And I'm like, that's a fair point. I need more tank tops for next year. Yeah, because it keeps so, you interested in the, in the in it as well. If you can you know, mix it up a little bit, and it'll give us another six segments next summer. That's right. So that's amazing. priorities. Yeah, priorities. Exactly. So anyway, so the wife, I've only got one one jacket and can't can't spare a spare. I hmm. uh, can't can't do it. I'm, I'm gonna wear it myself. Hmm. Uh, I'm sure you'll survive from the, your car to your front office. You'll be sweet. Yeah. But then I'm like, oh shit, I've got my golf jacket. I'm like, I swear I've got the the old Johnson Brothers. Green jacket, greener wet, from when you won. Wet weather. Yeah, wet weather. No, wet weather jacket <laughs> the Johnson Brothers gave us when we were with that club. That's right. And I, so I raced down to my uh, golf bag, open up the thing. There, lo and behold, there is the wet weather Johnson Brothers. Nice. Excellent. Yeah, Excellent. There you go. I said, look, good news. Good news, wife. I uh, got the jacket. I'm going I'm to put oh, the no. wash boy out. We're, we're good you, to go. And now, now I'm not going to jump ahead here, but. You yeah. sent her off to work in the Johnson Brothers wet weather jacket, did you? No, I didn't. No. So, oh, okay. so we, we washed the jacket. <laughs> okay. I bring it out. I hadn't had a look at it in a while. It's been, what, 10 years, 12 years since we played with the Johnson Brothers? Yeah, at least. 
there or thereabouts. Yeah. So get the jacket out, put it on the, the clothesline. I look at it, and the wife works in aged care. Mm. I look at the jacket for a minute, and I'm like, I forgot what the jacket looks like. <laughs> now, for, for our listeners, the Johnson brothers, uh, their emblem was a penis. <laughs> Two penises, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, just one penis, oh, okay. but swinging a golf club. That's right. No, so, scary. So I said to the wife, I'm like, so I said to the wife, I'm like, look, here's the jacket. If you want it, you can use it for work. However, you're about to work into an aged care facility, your choice. But hear me out here, devil's advocate. Which way do you think is more or less appropriate? She wears it into an aged care facility. Yeah. Or she takes my baseball jacket and I wear it to a primary school. That's a fucking very, nice, very good Sophie's choice you've stumbled mm. across there. I'm going to go with, this is my gut feel. Yeah. I'm going to go with, it would be better for her to wear the penis jacket to her Correct. workplace because, Greeno, purely because her co-workers may call it sexual harassment. Her supervisor mm. may disagree and say it's breaching company policy or what have you. But yeah. the old folks would fucking love it, Greeno. They'd love it. Yeah. They exactly. would laugh That's... their little hearts out. That's right. That's my theory. Mm-hmm. So uh, end result is she ended up working from home all week, didn't need to worry about jacket mm-hmm. in any, no, any respect. Gary. The end result uh, is she wore it just around the house for fun. Just around the house. <laughs> yeah. Correct. <laughs> On the Zoom meetings. <laughs> yeah, Zoom meetings. But she actually sent it to her friends, and she's like, Shane has just asked me to send the, wear this to work. Yeah. Is this appropriate or not? Yeah. Obviously, didn't ask her to wear it to work. Yeah. But her friends were like, "Is he out of his mind?" And I'm like, "Fucking, did you tell him the backstory? The exact story I just told him." Um, she obviously didn't because she thought it was funnier. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> now, nice, Gary. Fantastic. Now, Damo, uh, we were talking Speaking about the floods. Of floods. Yeah, we're talking about floods. And look, uh, a lot of a lot of communities are uh, just devastated by the floods yeah. over the course of the last couple of weeks. And the Queenslanders thought, have had it fucking far worse than us, and we've had it pretty fucking bad. Well, so. except for except for Lismore, who just Ooh. completely underwater, just terrible. Yeah. Um, but the good news is the Australian government's found I- I- ingenuitive ways to uh mm. to support them. Now you could look at our taxpayer dollars, you could look at disaster funds, you could look at different kind of aspects. Mm. But uh Peter Dutton, he thinks outside the square, Peter. He's gone, look, I've got a great idea. Let's get let's get a GoFundMe page going. <laughs> I fucking, let, let's, let's throw in, let, let's put a hat out. Mm-hmm. See how much cash we get for Lismore yeah. on a GoFundMe. Yeah. Now, this this is what the third, uh, where does he sit in the pecking order in Australian uh, Prime Minister power? He, he nearly was the Prime Minister. Very close, ago. until he didn't count his numbers properly. Yeah. Um, so you want him in charge of the disaster money. Mm. A dude, he can't count the election numbers. Um, <laughs> now- well, exactly, exactly right. And so, I, you know, look, I get the point that you're making. You know, hey, what mm. this is fucking bullshit. I go fund me when you're the you know second or third most important guy in the government. But mm-hmm. you know, your comment kind of cancels out your reason for uh, the argument in the first place. Because, well, okay, let's go with your logic. Why would you want him allocating government money? Isn't it far better if people just donate themselves? <laughs> Because well, he, he, clearly, if you think he doesn't understand money, then why would you want him spending it? So I exactly. think my 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 general position is always like the least amount of government spending, the better. Like I just find it funny. There's people in the in the uh, responses here, and they're getting angry at him for sharing this GoFundMe for the bu- for the floods for the bushfires. I nearly fucking said, yeah. right? Uh, yeah, yeah, one, yeah, one, 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 one fuck up at a time. Yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> One disaster just kind of blends into the next in this country, uh, exactly. doesn't it? It's either it's either on fire or drowning, one or the two. Yeah. <laughs> so, so he shares this GoFundMe and it's like, oh, you know, if you want to put some money in for a good cause and help these people out. And the response is people are fucking so angry at this guy for sharing it. It's like, you look at this guy. You're literally in government. Your mate manages the nation's coffers. You fund the rescue, repair, and recovery o- operation. That's your job. But <laughs> the funny thing is, right, these people are so angry that he's sharing a page for charity and not, they think they're a good person for wanting the government to spend more money. Like it's so Mm. fucking weird. No, it wouldn't the good thing to do then if you're so passionate about the fucking recovery effort, I hope I see your name on that fucking charity, right? I hope I see your name in the GoFundMe. You can always pay more tax if you want. But why don't you hey, give it to the people directly? I thought that's what we're all about. No, 
I'm angry at the government that I criticise, that they don't know how to spend money, that they're not spending enough money, money that they shouldn't have got in the first place. It's like, nice, fuck it. Gary. Well done for you. So, well yeah. done. Now, look, in the, in the government defence, they've mm. got, uh, they've got car parks to pay for. Um, <laughs> <laughs> nice, Gary. You know those potted before. plants we put in the office don't pay for themselves, ah, Greeno. Pay for myself. Now, uh, new rug with- that cost. I got that direct from Afghanistan. They, exactly. You know, I got that rug because they had it on the on the last plane leaving Afghanistan in lieu of the women and children that they left mm-hmm. on the runway. Exactly. Sorry, so ladies, got to make room for the rugs. <laughs> They're coming with now, us. Now, Damo, uh, no one, like, thankfully, someone decided to read the fine print. Mm. Now, I don't know if you know how GoFundMe pages work. Um, I, You know, people put something on there, people give money to it. Is that how it works? Correct. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> now, this, this thing was set up by Peter Dutton to mm. raise money for, for the floods, right? Okay. Do you know who the legal owner of the funds is, Damo? Uh, is it GoFundMe? No, it's the person who sets up the page. So anyone who donated to the inverted commas flood gave money to Peter Dutton. Ah, oh, nice, Gary. He has, nice, no le- Gary. he has no legal obligation to do anything with that money towards the floods because mm. in the fire print it says you are giving money to Peter Dutton. That's a good point, actually, you bring up, because he has probably now just created a rod for his own back, because in the lead up to the election, what is he going to get bombarded with? Show us the receipts, Peter. What have you mm-hmm. spent the GoFundMe money on, Peter? He's fucking collecting the GoFundMe money. He's just created an outrage cycle for no fucking yeah. reason. Yeah. You know well, there's morons who are giving money to Peter Dutton. Yeah. Simultaneously, thinking it's going to go to the floods, he has no legal obligation to give one cent. Now to he'd the be flood. pretty stupid if he if he didn't if he did anything except post the total that he got, then close mm. it, and then you know prove that he's given it to some fucking charity or something. That yeah. he has to now follow through on that because if he does anything except that, he's fucking done. He's finished. Have you seen Have you seen Peter Dunn? Yeah, the guy has no moral compass. That's got him going into some weird bribery thing to pay I, off. I, I, some well, particular yeah, electorate. but do you really do you really think a, a fucking the third most powerful politician in the country or whatever on you know high six figures is going to just rip people off on on a, on a GoFundMe like some fucking Twitch whore? You know, <laughs> just to, like word. that's going to be his big payoff, is it? At the end of the That'd day, pa- and then what? He's going to flee to Fiji. <laughs> With his flood money and then build a house that's high up in the palm trees. Nice, Gary! (laughs) Retire in paradise, Peter Dutton. Enjoy it. After ripping Uh, everyone off. Where do we want to go from here? Do we want to do Neighbours? Do we want to do Worst Karaoke Night Ever? Where do we want to go? Uh, Yeah, let's do the karaoke thing. Let's do a bit of karaoke. Uh, Because uh, you you sent me this uh, while we're off. Let's have a look at this bastard. Mm. I didn't realize there was another Russian story. No, it's 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 not. not. (laughs) Look at the the Chiron. Sorry. Special mention mention has to be given to this Chiron because I never noticed it before. Quote, Russia planning public executions in Ukraine. (laughs) What would the meerkat say, (laughs) Damo? Oh, what no. would the meerkat say about that? No, not this. No. <laughs> when we compare uh, meerkat, <laughs> hobbies, you know, but lately we get many people looking for car insurance. Many people looking for car insurance, so we cut off their fucking heads, Screener. We cut the heads off, they go get the insurance. It's pretty existing condition. Mm. Oh, fuck. Russia planning public executions. In- <laughs> so, what? Okay, okay, I'm going to need a source on that. <laughs> Did, did, did they interview somebody? It's like, yes, well, first we are going to move in our tanks and then we are going to mass execution in uh, unmarked graves. This will be beamed live to TikTok <laughs> or the Russian version of TikTok, which is nothing but tanks and pornography. You guys read The Crucible? You know, it's like Kitty, Kitty Prokta. We're going to kill it. She's, she's, she's a witch. We claim they're a witch. It's all good. If they burn, they're innocent. But if they fly away, we know we're all right. <laughs> your your Russian sounds a little Bruno Lucia, Greta. <laughs> it's a little chicken vibes. Yes, cheeky fucking bibs. <laughs> cheeky bibs, Shut, apparently. This show is off the fucking yeah. rails tonight. Uh, Russia's got us loose. Russia. Uh, all right, so yeah. this is a bunch of fucking concerned citizens, or as I like to call them, fucking idiots, Greta. <laughs> this is a bunch of fucking idiots. <laughs> Bro, bro, bro. bro, people are fucked out here. Bro. 
So this is a bunch of concerned citizens taking it upon them, taking it upon themselves to. It looks like they're on the steps of a parliament building of some kind. That or a library or a uh, train rocky. station <laughs> or rock. Could be, could be Philadelphia. They could be running the steps. They could be preparing for a title fight against Mr. T. I don't know. Yeah. We'll wait and see. The same group of concerned mothers, Greeno, were filmed earlier in the day punching into dead cows in an abattoir freezer. <laughs> <laughs> the mere guts. Yeah. They were running. They were running. You know, bringing their knees up high at the beach to run and hug Apollo Creed, Greeno. Mm. Uh, so yeah, a bunch of concerned citizens, aka fucking idiots. Uh, singing a song about why everyone needs to keep wearing masks, Bruno. <laughs> this is a protest, by the way. This is the state of protest <sighs> in 2021. Can, can I just is point it 21 out still? No, it's 22 now, isn't it? 22. Uh, can I just point something out? That poor kid mm. in the bottom left-hand corner, that kid doesn't want to be here. Now, he's there for all prosperity right now. Mm -hmm. He's going to get picked on by his schoolmates. Yeah. He's going to get picked on in the future. Mm. They're, going to, they're going to pull this footage back up and go, check out this dickhead. Mm. He's like, mate, mate, my mom, she fucking dragged me along. Can't help it. Uh, <laughs> Did you notice he's dressed like Batman? So part of me wants the does. kid Part of me wants the kid to garrote his mother and then drag her to the floor and then <laughs> hook her up to the back of his Batman peel. Fuck off down the road with her. Do you reckon she, he's secretly uh, hoping that his mother gets killed in a back alley? Maybe. Mm. Maybe because that'll be the part of it, that'll be his origin story. Then, won't as his it? origin story corrects that, yeah, he might just kill her himself. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, now <laughs> I'm going to catch that killer. <laughs> mask for loved ones, mask for friends. It's not about you. Also, not hard to do. Just because we're tired doesn't mean it's over. Right, quick pause there for one second. Mask. Now, is that a Christmas carol? No, I think it's a nursery rhyme. Oh, that's Furajaka. Sorry, my apologies. All right, I thought it was a Christmas carol. Yes, that's going to be. That's Furajaka. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Furajaka. Anyway, continue. Okay, so what's the tune then that they're singing? Furajaka. Which is what? That's just a random like song from. What's it God called? Furajaka. I've never heard that, but I'm sure there's. Furajaka, Furajaka, do re mi, do re mi. I have a good day, so I have it. Whatever it is, I don't know. I can't. Remember. I know it's for Jacques. I remember for some reasons. For some reason, I remember words like "Here I am, here I am." Yeah, that's that bit. How are it's you today, Jacques. sir? How are you today? Very sir? well, I thank you. Ah, blah, blah, blah. okay. Yeah. So anyway, so are these? They. It looks like a mother's group. One of them's wearing a helmet, which I'm going to give a nice Gary to. Nice Gary. Because yeah, who not, knows? Sir. Who knows what sort of brain injuries they may have. <laughs> Have sustained yeah. prior to this, obviously. Exactly. So this is, it looks like some kind of mother's group. So, yeah. uh, Green Oak, do they have the mind of a 10-year-old or do they think everybody else does? We'll find out. Let's listen to the song and see if we can piece it together. Okay. For loved ones, mask for friends. It's not about you. Also not hard to do. Now, you and I, Greeno, we've had our fair share of, we've done our fair share of parody songs in the past, have we not? Mm -hmm. now, we've done some good ones. We have. Now, listen to how many fucking, listen to how many syllables they try to squeeze into that too line. Many. To way too, too many. many. Rookie yeah. move, mums. Rookie move. Yeah. Got to make it fly. That's right. So have a listen to this. Friends, it's not about you. Also not hard to do. Yeah, too many there. Yeah, they're, they're, you try to squeeze three syllables into one. Yep. That's that's a rookie error with parody. Nice, Gary. Um, nice, Gary. We're the we're the lower echelon. You got your weird owl as the peak, and we're very low down. But even we in that day, when we were creating our own parody songs solely for our own amusement, us and our mates, yes. still made sure it met the syllable quotient. It's got a. It's it, the the ideal parody song should be basically identical, except the words different. Exactly, 100% right. Yeah, and so it uh, should sound the same. So, like, if you hum along to it, it sounds like you're humming along to the real song. If mm -hmm. you change it too much, then it's no longer a parody. Then it's a fucking, Correct. then it's a reimagining, Greeno. Yeah, exactly. You're creating your own tune. Yeah. Just because we're tired. Just because we're tired. That's what it sounds like. I'm sorry, ladies. <laughs> Just because we're tired. Just because we're tired. Just because we're tired. <laughs> Doesn't mean it's over, man. Mask, mask, mask for seniors, mask for kids. It's not about you. Also, not like the blue. 
I do now, like look, that they're reading it. Like they couldn't remember the words to no, this. No, I couldn't epic. remember the words. Yeah. You'd sit there, you're like, look, we need to do a rehearsal, ladies. Now fuck the rehearsal. We'll read it off cue cards. Yeah. It it loses it loses a bit of impact if you're not off book. Mm. That's my thoughts yeah. to begin with. Uh the song itself is a bit of a hunger shit. Uh but <laughs> the fact that they're not off book, that bugs me a little bit. It's true. How about this, Greeno? Happy International Women's Day, everyone. Oh, yeah. quick, so before we get to this, quick point. Like I'm like I'm a guy who I've been coughing my lungs up for two weeks, right? I'm still wearing my mask. Not like mainly because I don't want to cough spit over fucking kids walking past me mm-hmm. when I'm picking up my kids from daycare mm-hmm. or vice versa. Yeah. But once again, I'm not gonna force people to do it. It's kinda like That's right. That's what it comes down to, yeah. If you want to wear a mask like I do, I'd rather wear a mask because I'm like, well, I don't want to cough on people. And if someone's coughing, I'd rather not fucking spit in my mouth. Yeah. Sweet. I'll wear a fucking mask and we're all good. Mm-hmm. Most people don't want to, and that's cool too. Like That's it. You're like, a, guess cut. what? You're a big You're a big kid. Uh, it's so bizarre. Isn't it bizarre to see middle-aged people protesting the government, demanding that they give them more rules? Yeah. You know, I... It's it's that mean ground. It's govern me harder, Daddy. <laughs> well, that's well, that, that's the interesting thing I found. Like, we, if we we talk serious for a quick minute before we get sure. to International Women's Day, yeah. like I, I've noticed at my school when I'm picking up the Impli- kids, implying that you don't take International Women's Day seriously, of course. No, 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 no I take it very scary. seriously, of course. Oh, Look, we're gonna we're gonna talk <laughs> about the serious stuff before we get into the fucking fun and jokes here with in, these in, with in these sheilas. Yeah. Now, so like when I'm dropping off a kid at school, I said to the wife earlier week, I'm like, it's me and two other people out of fifty parents wearing masks when we're picking up our kids in the school. Yeah. And that's fine. Each their prerogative. Yeah. But it, it, made, it made me really think of like the, the interesting dynamic in that. And I'm like, people are very much, well, I just do what I'm told, right? Yeah, sure. And not think, and not think about the reasons why. Hmm. And that's, that always confused me a little bit. Because I'm like, well, I'll wear a mask because, yeah, I understand if you spit and you're coughing or whatever, a mask is probably going to stop a bit of that coming out. And it's probably going to protect someone or protect myself, vice versa. Yep. So there's a reason why I choose to wear one. I never wore a mask in the same way I'd never fucking get vaccinated just because I'm like, I'm told you have to do it. Mm. I've got my own individual choices to do that. Yep. Um, it makes no sense. And then I realized, I'm like, well, everyone just wore a mask because they're like, well, do, they do it. Yeah. But did anyone ever sit there and think about, well, why are you wearing it? And well, what the people- Meant to be there for. Yeah, well, the people who asked things like, why are we wearing it? What's the point of this? This is fucking dumb. They were, of course, kicked off Facebook and Twitter, Gruner, before spreading well, medical misinformation. Like, no one ever, no one thought about, like, there's obviously a reason you, you wear a mask. There's a reason that if you go into open heart surgery, hmm. the doctor is wearing a fucking mask. Yeah. To sp- stop because germs going in you. Going in, correct. Yep. So, <laughs> so there's a reason behind it. But people just wear the mask like, oh, well, we told we don't have to wear it anymore. It must be sweet. Hmm. Irrespective of the fact that, now the cases you were told you have to wear a mask because there's three cases in the community two months ago. Now there's a quarter of a million. That's right. That, but it's like, no, you don't have to wear a mask anymore. Okay, sweet. I won't wear it. Like fucking, there's got to be some logic applied. And once again, each to everyone's own, you're, you're in charge of your own health. You're your own person. Yeah. Go nuts. Choose whatever you want to do. But I just found it very funny that people only were doing something because they were told to do it and not thinking about why they were doing it. Cause as soon as they're like, don't, you don't have to do it anymore. They just didn't do it. Right. And that's, that's the majority. basically, in a nutshell, Greeny, you just described the NPC meme that we were talking about, you know, a while mm. ago. Non-playable characters. People just, you know, repeat what they're programmed to say. Yeah, 100%. It's just, I, I've had, I thought there'd be more people, and honestly, still wear a mask, mm. just on, like, I'm a, I'm a logic dude. Mm. I'm like, well, the, like, here's why I'm going to do this for these particular reasons. Yep. If I'm out in, in a wide, open public... I'm not going to fucking wear a mask because that's mm. that's pointless. Yep. Like I'm not near anyone. This is fucking stupid. If I'm in a car with my kids, it makes no sense to wear a mask. That's mm-hmm. fucking stupid. But if I'm in close proximity to fucking 30 people and I've got a cough or someone else has got a cough, yeah, yeah man, like how hard is it for me to fucking put a mask on no. to reduce potential risk? Yeah. No, not crazy. But once again, applying logic to situations because wearing a mask in an open environment with no one around you is fucking stupid. Mm. So to mandate that was fucking dumb. Yep. In the same way to go, don't ever wear a mask is also fucking dumb, even if you're around 50 people that are coughing in your face. It's it's just lacking. Well, I think about I, the I don't people... mean to get all serious on the no, show. No, no, that's funny. I think yeah. about the people who, you know, spent the last two years. Like, just say you were someone who was like, look, the mask is it's not going to fucking... I don't really like wearing it, but I don't care. Um, it's really not going to protect me or anything. So, you know, whatever. I don't give a fuck. Now, the people who were doing what they were told, uh, imagine they're 
imagine how fucking imagine how mind fucked they are. Imagine how broken their brain is because one literally from one day to the next. One day they were angry at people for not who weren't wearing masks. You're not doing enough to keep us safe. You're not doing enough to protect us. Yeah. And then the government comes out and says, "Good news everybody. The science has changed <laughs> and you don't have to wear a mask anymore. It's fine." <laughs> and then they go, "Oh, good." And they take their mask off, yet they still think the people who weren't wearing it the day before are like fucking science deniers. And it's like, well, hang on, you're now doing the same thing because you were told to do it. Where does that, where do you, where do you rank on the, I I trust the science, you know? And and also looking at numbers as well. Like I'm a numbers dude, you know, I'm a numbers dude. Mm -hmm. When you go, when you go, okay, people stop wearing masks, people stop social distancing, it's open season. And you see numbers go from like, you know, a thousand to a quarter of a million a month. Mm. You're like, well, you know, maybe there was something in what the preventative measures were. Mm. And then you're going to go, well, then you do risk association, right? Yep. You go, well, yeah, there's a quarter of a million cases. How many died? Okay, well, this many people died. Okay, out of those people, what were, how, what age group are they in? Okay, they were in this. Now, did they have any anything else other than that? And then you apply all that kind of logic tree to yeah. like, okay, well, here's the genuine risk to me and my family. What measures do I want to take based on those numbers? Yep. But no one's doing that. It's like, well, the government said, fucking, we're sweet now. It doesn't matter if there's a quarter of a million cases. <laughs> nice, Gary. The it's thing that so they fun. were literally ter- terrified about last week, now they don't yeah. care. Because the government said, don't have to wear a mask That's anymore. Right. And was like, go nuts, fucking take it off. That's right. Now, I- I- I'd like to see the government take it to the next level. I want to see them reju- get rid of pants. <laughs> Just go, we don't have to wear pants anymore, guys. Yeah. And see how many people you rock up, cock out. I've got a little I like story stories story. about <laughs> the Niatas. <laughs> I got little stories off for you here on International Women's Day, Greeno. Um, yeah, cock out. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, as you know, working from home, Greeno, comes with yeah. certain benefits. And I've been working pants from off. home. I have now fully embraced the pants. I think I have gone, it's taken a couple of months, but I think I've fully, uh, I've cocooned and metamorphosized and I'm now a beautiful butterfly, Greeno. <laughs> in, the, in the work from home environment. Now, um, please tell me there's some kind of pants happening. You're just not wearing a full pant. Boxes only. Boxes oh, only. Now, now we're in an interesting kind of situation here. Mm-hmm. Boxes only, oh. T-shirt and boxes. Um, <laughs> everything is climate controlled and green oak wearing. I don't wear shoes or socks all day. I just, if I get up and walk around, I put the slippers on green oak. No, so no, no. I, that's, that's my, wife, my wife is now calling me the dude because... <laughs> Because I so resemble the character from uh, Jeff Bridges' character from the famous movie Greener, The Big Lebowski. Because I'm now walking oh, around in my underwear. Give yourself a nice Gary. Now, <laughs> first of nice, all, Gary. Uh, we need to establish some boundaries with the work from home. Now, uh, the, the shoe situation is sweet. Yep. There's no qualms with the, the shoes. Mm-hmm. Now, even from a work from home situation, yep. there's got to be some sense of professionalism. Yeah. There so, is. I'm, I'm on time. I'm at my workstation. <laughs> I do good. I work hard. I do, you know, pretty decent hours from time to time as well. Um, but just from the waist down, it's party time. <laughs> no, you've got to, you've got to at least put a short on. Mate. I've got to you be can't. uncomfortable. Why? No, not uncomfortable. You just, no, I don't know. I wear a comfortable short. Mm. It's definitely a work professional short, mm. but I'm at least, I've at least got everything covered because but, yeah, everything's covered on me too, but I'm just more comfortable than you. <laughs> Nice, Gary. Oh, and I've even got to the point now, Greeno, where mm-hmm. let's say you get a delivery. Now, there's always that thought, like, if you're just in boxes, right, and yeah. you get a delivery or something shows up at the door, there's that quick panic that goes through. You're like, shit, I've got to put some pants on before I go out the front. Yeah. I have now ditched that as well. So oh, bro, if bro. I if, if a delivery shows up at the house here, I will now just step out in the boxer shorts and the shirt and the fucking slippers. Anyway, <laughs> pick it up, take it. Thanks for that, mate. See you. Have a good day. Dude, Completely you don't dude. give a fuck. Nice, yeah. Gary. Don't, do not give a fuck. I was pissed off today because I had to leave the house because I had to go and buy some tobacco. Can you believe that they don't deliver tobacco in this country? Really? Outrage, Greeno. Fucking outrage. How is that? Yeah, we, How's that possible? Uh, I don't know. We deliver alcohol. What's the difference? Mm-hmm. What's the fucking difference? So, like, you can't even get it from the bottle shops, Greeno, because I thought, look, I'll... At, at worst, I'll pick up a packet of darts from the bottle shop and I'll get yeah, that yeah, delivered yeah. with my fucking Dan Murphy's greener. Yeah, yeah. I'll pay the overs for the, mm. for the tobacco. That's fine. Can't get it. Wow. 
Yeah. What is there a rationale behind it? Mm-hmm. I have no idea. It'd be some stupid government rationale. So I guess that's the last mountain for me to climb. That's the last hurdle that I have to mount, Greeno. Is Checking, do I progress? Well, now now that I've completely in- embraced home life, and now I really mm. only have to leave the house to pick up tobacco because it's the only thing I can't get delivered. How yep. long do you think before I'm buying tobacco in the box of shorts and the slippers? No, <laughs> I'll go it's from great. I'll go from bedtime only to working all day to picking up deliveries out the front of the house to leaving the house in boxer shorts. Now, quick question for you, sir. Yep. Uh, what are we wearing as we speak? Boxer shorts, black t-shirt. <laughs> nice, Gary. Like, even I put on like I'm I'm wearing basically my pajamas. Mm-hmm. But. My pajamas when I go to bed. You, you clothing shorts. cuck. No, well, no, no, you're, no, a, you're a horde of big garments, man. But at least I, I put on a pair of shorts as I walk out. Shed that, shed that designer skin, bro. No, it's, I, uh, I feel like it, it kicks my mind because uh, if I walk out into the office in just boxes, then I feel like it's not going to get me into a work mentality. See, I'm the I opposite. Need- if, if I'm loose and free and casual, and that's when I do my best work. Because my mind is 100% focused on the task instead of being like OCD, fidgety, not comfortable. Pants not comfortable. No. Yeah. So pants off and I'm, and I'm chill. I've got the air con on here, Gre- Greener. The air con, the fan, it's nice and dark and just Here's box thing, of shorts wear, and I'm smashing I'm with you. I'm all about comfort, but I wear like I wear gym shorts. They seem very uncomfortable to me. No, they're very comfortable. They're the most comfortable pants I've got. So the wife will look me, she's like, you're wearing that to work. I'm like, well, no, I'm going to see my pants. But at least I've got pants on. Mm-hmm. But they're gym pants. But I agree, the comfortability very, very important. Yep. Um, I was thinking, through, thinking about you during the week. Mm. How, like, how much are you thankful that you're not driving a truck in the last couple of weeks? <laughs> Can you imagine? Well, it wasn't even the driving part; it was the being outside of it. That was oh, all of it. Like worst. trying to get around flood plains. I was like, oh. I would have been working. Like I worked in it last year. Mm-hmm. So last year, what didn't it didn't go as long, but it was probably, if anything, it was m- more hectic. If that makes sense, it was it was like it was like three weeks of rain, but it wasn't as crazy flood. So it was yeah, it was just, it was just nonstop. Yeah, yeah. So I worked in it. I would have had to work in it, and it would have been you know one in the morning, day after day mm-hmm. after day after day, being knee high and disgusting, fucking filthy water on the street, and yeah, yeah and you get garbage. Yeah, that's right, getting sick, and then so you you do that all night. And then you walk into the servo on the way home to get yourself a meat pie for the drive home. And the guy says, sorry, mate, can't come in without a mask. You know the germs. <laughs> nice, Gary. Thanks, mate. Yeah, I just, I've been stuck with half a dozen syringes <laughs> last night while I was working. Rats, yeah, rats are eating my boots, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I got covered in fucking homeless person piss. So, you know. <laughs> but, but yeah, mask yeah. on, sir. Mask on, mate. Yeah, nice, nice Gary. Gary. There you go. Should we just skip the last break? Should we just fucking wrap it up? What do you think? Nah, let's do a sexist block, go to a quick break, and then we'll do a very short back-end segment. Okay, well, let's do the break first and then do sexist block, Karina. Sounds good. All right, fuck it. It's the JJ Stoner Spring Collection, the perfect attire for any and every occasion you can think of this season. Like we were in the mosh pit full of sweat and everyone's slapping, hitting, and pulling on you. This shit won't rip. Lunch at your favorite cafe? Brunch with the girls? These stylish ensembles will give you the confidence you need to look and feel your best. Or if you're getting arrested for possession, it comes with a built-in police stick-proof body armor. Keep swinging, pigs! Call now and your order will come with a complimentary ounce of that dankest bubblegum slur cane that the South has to offer. Don't forget the wall tapestry. If you need to cover your wall, it works. Hello, my name is Frozen Asian, and I like to tell you about my show, The Sunday Night Shit Show, every Sunday night at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, along with good conversations and laughing at funny and weird shit we find on the internet. We also have The Hat Cam, where I showcase my myriad of great-looking hats. Here is a testimonial from a great friend of mine who has enjoyed my hats lately. I I hope your next hat is a bullet. Jesus <laughs> Christ, what are you, fucking Asian dick crazy? <laughs> you. <laughs> you have to ruin my evening. Like I, I'm just gonna just listen, you know, listen to my bud do their show, and you, get, you gotta, 
You just gotta do that. You just the hat. So you're not enjoying it? No. <laughs> Dude, Asian oh, come Dick on, Tracy. I secretly you enjoy it. You look no. like you're going undercover in, in Argentina, but it's now working. I hate you. <laughs> I hate you. I hate oh, come on, you secretly habit. love it. No, no, I openly hate it. <laughs> <laughs> and there you have it. Uh, so, subscribe to the Sunday Night Shit Show at youtube.com slash Sunday Night Shit Show. And uh, hope to see you there on Sunday nights. Bye. Welcome to The Starting Block. Follow on Twitter at The Starting Block. Drop the K at the end. Find the podcast on iTunes or on TAVshow.com. Yes, back on the block. Gentlemen, boys and girls. In National Women's Day, we uh, mentioned yeah. it only about nine minutes ago, then we fucked it off and told a different story instead. Mm. Um, we saw this. Uh, Sorry, ladies, we wanted to celebrate International Women's Day, but a more interesting conversation about my underwear came up. Nice, Gary! Yeah. Sorry about it that. Happens. Yeah. It happens. It's yeah, fair call. Uh, I've got to cover the big issues first. Chauvinist before we get to and sexist and misogynist yes. and chauvinist and sexist. There we go. Uh, <laughs> saw this throughout the course of the week. You want to pull out that picture there, please, Damo? Oh, uh, yeah. I'm going to throw that off for you. There you go. There we go. So uh, I don't know who this person is. Me either. Yeah. But uh, she decided to celebrate International Women's Day. She's a blue check mark, so obviously she's more important than, you know, a normal person. 2.1 followers. I, what was she uh, like? Must be, a woman, uh, must be a soccer player. So I kick balls. MMA? Ah, oh, soccer player. Right, okay. I can soccer player. Yeah. So 2.1 million followers. Uh, very, very. So she said, happy International Women's Day. Now, she's a mum of two, right? Hey, she is. I understand that a lot of people are really upset with me and my International Women's Day post. Oh, yesterday. okay. Update. I've taken time to reflect and process. She's reflected. And from the bottom of my heart, um, this is the fake story. I want to apologize. To absolutely no one, you uh, guys. Uh, gotcha. Zing, Gary. Your mind. It is a joke. Laugh. If not, go outside, get some fresh air because you're bored. Please. Ah, uh, okay. Now it all comes clear, Greeno. So she was. Happy International Women's Day, and then scrubbed out her own son. On the- her son, yeah. yeah. Uh, took it, sent a photo. <laughs> she was taking a photo of herself no, and her daughter, hey. but she chose to. She post shit posted Greener. She shit posting. <laughs> she posted. Yeah, well done. <laughs> so she trolled the entire world. She's like, yeah, check this shit out. I'm gonna scroll my son's face out. Uh, once again, just fucking pissing all over her son. Well done. Yeah. Uh, on International Women's Day. Fuck him. Now and then <laughs> put up put up a fake apology. Fuck the little uh, dude. He's gonna yeah, learn. Fuck him. Yeah. Fucking. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell him to cut off his penis. That's how he's gonna he's gonna roll exactly. at International Women's Day. Uh that's a dick move for mine. Dick, you dick. You dick. That may be sexist block, but for me that's a dick move. You could have fucking posted any picture you wanted, but that's just fucking being a dick right there. Yeah, good on it. Well, okay, how about this, Greener? If we're gonna we're gonna balance it out, Greener, how about this picture? What do you think of this, Greener? Nice Gary! From Cricket Australia uh, with the cut with the yeah. with the Australian cricket captain Patrick Cummins doing the DX symbol from old WrestleMania. No, <laughs> no, 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 no DX, DX symbol is over the crush Generation X. Isn't that the finishing move? What he's doing there, the X? No, it's a crutch crutch chop. So he's doing it the opposite way. Uh, he's got to get it lower okay. over the dick. Was this X Park Greeno? Did he have something like this? No, X Park did the same thing. He did it over the dick. Did he really? Okay. Well, yeah. he's doing something. <laughs> he's doing the reverse. He's doing the reverse he's, he's Degeneration the reverse X. One. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so it's a little poster of Patrick Cummins and it says, I choose to challenge gender stereotypes and discriminatory attitudes when I see them. He did not say that. Nice, Gary! Oh, no. I'm robots. Like, Patty, can we post that? He's like, yeah, mate. Not Cummins yeah, uh... Cider. 
<laughs> oh, exactly. His na- nickname is fucking Cider. Cider. Like, <laughs> come on, Cider. Like, they're like, ah, oh, Patty, we can't have another uh, Smitty or or uh, what is it, Dick Pick, Dick Pick Payne. We need, we need, we need fucking good dude up here front. See, so- this is this is what you call Greener a corporate overcorrection. Yeah, <laughs> they've gone too far. Yeah. We've gone from like ball tampering to like dick pics to Patty just being like, get yeah, whatever this is. And they're, and and they're like, posting like, how about this? Why not put the women's cricketer there? Yeah, they're always complaining about women's cricket and women's sport not getting enough exposure. Yet, even on International Women's Day, you need to put up a picture of a fucking man to get your point nice. out. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, you could have post one of the Quality. female players. No, nah, equality, Damer. That's how we roll with equality. quality. So you reckon that they've taken like one of the kind of blokiest kind of environments that cricket was? Remember, cricket was the home of the handlebar mustache, the mullet. Yeah, back in the day. It's not now. It's no, it's it hasn't funny. been for ages. Ah, yeah, a, lo- a long while. It's now. It's latte sippers. Yeah. So, but again, like the overcorrection continues. We we weren't. We're not allowed to say batsman anymore. Have you noticed that? Everyone has to say really? batters. Yeah. Yeah. Batsman. No, well, listen to the commentators next time. You now that you've now that you've heard me tell you that you won't fucking miss it. They all refer to them as batters now because they're why? Because it's so gender what, neutral. Different. I know it's, it's ridiculous. It's bats I'm, men. They're men. I know they're, they're men yes, playing. They're, they're, they're men. men. <laughs> exactly. So we can call the girls batters if you want. Yeah. Because they're not bats men. I understand that, but I'm with you. But that's they they've decided kind of five years ago that we're no longer using the term batsman because it's sexist, even though they are men with a bat. It's yeah. nuts. So now we now we're up to the point where the, the Australian Greek captain is like, I choose to challenge gender stereotypes. How about you go out there and have a fucking bowl, mate? No, <laughs> like, go out there and have a fucking bowl. Like, so, <laughs> look at this guy here. Listen to this shit. Because uh, now I, you've got to scan the replies on Twitter, Greeno. That's the best part. That's where the gold is. Because Twitter, <laughs> Twitter is basically just a sewer of all of the dumbest people on the internet. Ah, oh, it's, it's the goat of stupidity. You've got to go trawling through it. So look at this top reply, right? He talks, this is somebody. He talks about climate change. He talks about equality. Pat Cummins is a gem of a person. A captain, <laughs> a captain Australia should be proud of. Love heart emoji. Nice. It's like, hang on. Hang on, hang on. Hang on. So wait, because he talks about climate change. See, this is how shallow these fucking people are, right? If you just talk about something that they're in favour of, like climate change, and all you're doing is putting out, like, somebody else is writing the statement, you're just posing for a photo. That's how yeah. dumb people are. He's posed for a photo. He probably has no idea that this fucking thing even exists, right? Somebody's put it out, and they're like, he's such a good person. He cares about women. You're an idiot. Do you not understand what this corporate fucking pandering actually is? Do you want to know, uh, if you go back to the photo, mm. that's actually Patty auditioning for the next series of Celebrity Deal or No Deal. <laughs> nice, Gary! I thought, no it was, I thought it was Patty who has been training in the off-season to become an air traffic controller greener. Nice, no, Gary! Cancel, cancel! Yeah. Uh, there you go. That's, that's just terrible. Due there to cutbacks, due to cutbacks in the Australian cricket team, he now has to direct the Australian plane, the, the Australian team jet out off the <laughs> runway, Greener. <laughs> Safety Himself. first. Safety first. So there you have it. Uh, Demo, the uh, the one day cup in uh, state cricket was played today, mm-hmm. and it was the Blues versus WA. How do we go, Greeno? Well, here's the thing, Demo. So uh, we got dusted, oh, and man. we had them six for seventy nine. We let them score two hundred and twenty odd, and we lost. What? Now, now here's the thing. I was like, this is bullshit. This is fuck. A couple of there was an amazing catch. Check out at my like the show's Twitter feed. Mm-hmm. The catch that Hilton cut. Cut right. Can't uh, ride. Can't <laughs> ride. Took, um, took to basically win the game. Mm-hmm. He's fucking unbelievable. It's one of the best catches I've ever seen. But then I heard the only reason New South Wales got into the final yeah. is they had four consecutive rainouts. What? So we so drew, 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 drew. So technically, Stop. yeah. So it was all based on a win percentage. Yeah. So New South Wales had won like three or four, maybe, mm. and then they had four rainouts in a row. And then, yeah, watch this. Okay, let's have a look. BYU running through no, the You won't see it. It's so good, they don't show it on the first view. Stand this is state cricket, by the way. All oh, right. The camera doesn't anyway. go oh, back that, that far. No, it does. It does catch, catch it on the, the other Hilton side. Cartwright. Cartwright. Oh, my God. Cartwright. Keep watching. 
I said, well, what's this? And I'm like, what did he do? I can't see it. And then they come back and show you the other angle in a second. Okay. Into contention to win this game. Look at the look at the fucking where it was too. Seven for two hundred and four. You should have been able to beat them with six overs to go, chasing two twenty five. Yeah, you should have. Should have yeah. should have polished that game off. That's ridiculous. On, on Reeks, though. What well, was that the, big uh, fucking hit? What was he thinking? Well, the tail enders. You could just WA, paddle them around with that score with those many that, overs. Exactly, and that was the exact point they made in in the com box. Yeah, it was uh, Stewie Clark. It was Brad Haddon and Brendan Julian. I think in the com box. And they were all like, yeah, I don't know why he played that shot. But anyway, keep watching. So they threw it away, fucking... basically. The Blues threw yeah, it away. Yeah, right. pretty much. Uh, keep watching because it's an amazing catch. Right. Is gone. There's a twist there. Here we go. Watch this. Pretty controlled in his... This has been one of Henrique's best years too, hasn't it? Incidentally. Nah, not really. No? I thought hey, I heard him getting he... pumped up big in the early early part. Uh, uh, last season was his best year. But mm. yeah, this year he's been, he was injured for most of it. Ah, so. okay. What's his catch? He didn't need to oh! That's at full. They, they show that in slow-mo. So when you watch it in full speed, it's fucking even unbel more unbelievable. I mean, he is horizontal. Like He is horizontal in the air. Yeah. That ball is probably going about 90 miles an hour, It maybe? was flat. It was very flat. It was flat, flat and hit hard, and he held on to it. He's got oh horizontal. God. What a catch. All right, oh. let's have a look here. Uh, full pace, come on. In the outfield, that. So they do play it at full pace, do they? Oh, no, hopefully. He probably knocked his fucking teeth out too, <laughs> catching it. That's just brilliant. That is brilliant. So it's full pace. Full that's pace. the only way to see them. For, for one, he puts him Zach Mo. I'm pretty sure they do eventually. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah. Yep. So this is the angle you want to see it from. Here. Oh, wow. What a fucking catch that is. No, that basically, Gary. that one WA the, the, the comp. Uh, so between that catch and the fact that they actually led the comp and they played all the games, you said, well, wow, and four rainouts to get in the GF, yeah. it, it made sense that yeah. uh, someone won there to, to WA. Nice guy. Uh, let's nice skip sports guy. journalism because yeah. that's embarrassing. It's just pointing out that Get to Daryl Beatty, Greeno. Let's get to fucking Daryl Beatty. Now, uh, I wasn't aware of this. So the MotoGP season started last weekend, right? Mm. And I wasn't aware that Channel 10 are no longer televising MotoGP. Mate, I didn't know that Channel 10 were still televising MotoGP what? because I've had Fox for years and years and years, and if I want to watch that shit, I just go to Foxtel, you know? Oh, exactly. But th what, what do you miss out on Foxtel? Daryl Beatty. You miss out on Daryl Beatty. Dun, so dun, 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 dun. You can't beat Beatty! <laughs> uh, so, so it came to our attention. Like someone posted on Twitter going, is it just me or has Channel 10 no longer got the rights to MotoGP? Yeah. So, and included like BD and stuff. So I posted back. Uh, no, I think I, I, no, they didn't post BD in it. And I'm like, look, if Channel 10 no longer have the rights, and that means Daryl BD is no longer commentating MotoGP, then that is a travesty. It's a fast, Amo. It's a fast. fast. Beyond all proportions. And BD fucking replied back. Did he, no, did he reply? I thought he, he just replied. liked it. No, he replied back. He's like, I agree. And oh, like, yes. BD. Fucking Daryl So Beattie. Channel 10 no longer has the coverage, and it means no more fucking Daryl Beatty. Now, if if, Moto, if uh, Fox Sports, because hmm. the commentators, they got the Aussie guys, are fucking terrible. Yeah. It's like uh, Damien Cudlin and uh, who's the other guy? Is it Troy Bayless? No, nah, not Troy Bayless. It's number two, and they're not fucking very good. They're, okay. they're very awkward. They're not Beatty. Yeah. Because you can't be Beatty. No, that's right. But, they're trying to be beady and it's no good. Daryl Beatty's like the Murray Walker of MotoGP mm -hmm. for Australians. For Australia. Yeah. So if they don't sign up, if, if Fox Sports don't sign up Daryl Beatty, if they've now got the exclusive rights to MotoGP, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. But you have to you have to throw the bank. Absolutely. If not, if not, we'll start up a Peter Dutton style GoFundMe. <laughs> for Daryl Beatty. <laughs> Daryl Beatty to put towards his paycheck All right. for Fox Sports. Now, I've got a question for you, the Greeno. Is he still <laughs> plugging for Shannon's insurance, though? <laughs> Is he still uh, doing the plugs for them? Is he still shilling probably. for Shannon's? I think he's still shilling for Shannon's. But because it's Beatty, we let that shit slide. Oh, no, we want we want him. He should be advertising. I want Daryl Beatty advertising every product on television. Oh, good, good, good. I thought we were on a different wavelength here. No, I'm no, like, no. I want Beatty on as many products as possible. Make your money because you're not getting a gig at the MotoGP at the moment. <laughs> So you need to be out there selling insurance, mate. I'm going to post. We're going to start a GoFundMe. Yep, for Daryl. Daryl Beatty to do to get a Fox Sports contract. You know what? Like all jokes aside, for me, it's like remember when the supercars went from ten to seven? Yeah. 
And we were all up in arms. I was big, massive into supercars back then. And yep. um, everyone was up in arms because it's like, you know what? We're going to miss out on fucking Crompton. Uh, Crompton, Crompton. Right Neil exactly. Crompton, who's the Daryl Beatty of the V8 supercars. It's exactly. the same thing. So, but Channel 7 did the right thing. And guess what? They signed up Crompo. Signed Crompton. Because exactly. Crompton could have stayed at Channel 10 to do the Formula One. And he was like, you know what? It's, it's my baby. I'm going where the supercars go. Yeah. Because he's the voice of the supercars. Same with Beatty. So they need to reach out to Daryl Beatty because Beatty's been doing it for like 20 years as well, hasn't he? Oh, yeah, easy. Yeah, so well, he knows well, everything about the sport. Like, yeah, he we knows were watching what's going it when on. we were 17 and he was calling it then. So, yeah, yeah. 20, 20 or plus years. Exactly. So, we, we, although, Greeno, we do get one step closer to our dream of getting Beatty and Brundle in the same commentary box. <sighs> oh, mate, yeah, now we're talking. Yep. That's, that's surely happened at a Australian F1, hasn't it? Oh, you'd like to think so. Brundle of love meets the beat. Meets the beat. Yeah, yeah, you can't be Beatty and Brundle of Love. Yeah. Now we're talking. That would be something. So, yeah, they need to they need to get out there and sign up Daryl Beatty fucking immediately. ASAP. Immediately. Should have done it last week. Yep. If not, do it this week. Nice, Gary. Uh, if not, nice, Gary. the block is going to start up a GoFundMe page, right. and I'll, that, I'll use that as this week's To promo. rival Peter Dutton's. Yeah, exactly. There you uh, go. I think that's it. That's it. Do you have anything before we want to go? You got any plugs you're doing the show tomorrow? Yeah, doing the show tomorrow. Tonight, what did you, what did you do on your week off, by the way? Uh, what did I do? I two week. Yeah, no, I I relaxed. I didn't do much. Nice. Yeah, no, just took a week off. Got some sleep. Uh, well, I, <laughs> yeah, I slept nice. in. I slept in when I on the Saturday when I'd normally be up at like kind of you know pretty early to early get ready for the show. show. Nice. Yeah, slept in. I didn't wake up till after it. I stayed in bed for three hours, hung over, ordered fish nice. and chips, got it delivered. Green Hay fish and chips. Oh. Beautiful. Oh, well, Salty dirty chips. fish and chips. Dirty you've fish and chips. Sh- you've been hanging shit on me about for how long now? Yeah, dirty fish and chips. So done right. Yeah. There's nothing like it. And I do get a craving every now and then, like a pregnant mm-hmm. woman for fish and chips, Greeno. I agree. Can't help it. So, yeah, did that. Did you got a scallop? Get a scallop? I got half a dozen scallops, mate. Nice. I go just, because when I order shit like that, I, I order it. Well, I order it knowing that I'm probably going to throw half of it out and I don't care. It's fine. It's I want to feast. It. That's right. I'm going to yeah. pay the extra 10 bucks or whatever it is to get a yeah. mountain of chips. <laughs> I don't care. Did you get a seafood stick? I'll I tell you what I got. I, I ended up getting a pack that was like a large chips. And when I say large, I mean fish and chip shop large, right? Yeah, quality large. So it was large. Not two bucks. We're talking four bucks. No, it was, it was like the $10 option. Oh, well, I'm thinking old school two bucks. Like two, bucks. two bucks. You should okay. get your fucking a shit ton. Yeah. So double down. Now, uh, uh, see, you know, CPI, et cetera. Mm. Inflation. Yeah, we're talking about 10 bucks worth of chips now. Well, yeah. I, I would put the portion that I got to be in the range of about two, $2 worth in the old money. That's two what I said, them. four bucks. Right, exactly. So got one of them. Then half a dozen potato scallops, Greeno. Yeah, got to get half a dozen easy. Half a dozen. I got. Which, which the scallop is, I, I find ironic. But I do the exact same thing as you because the scallop is just a big chip. It is, yeah. It's a big flat chip. It's like a pit it's chip, pan- chip. chip pancake. It's potato. Yeah. It's potato deep fried. I'm like, that's a fucking chip. It it's is. a different shape. It's, it, it is, is. yeah. It's, it's, it is. it's a different shaped <laughs> chip. It's fucking pointless, really. But so delicious, Greeno. Mm. You don't know how they do it. So good. Uh, there was three pineapple fritters. I'm big keen on pineapple oh, fritters. I love it. I can, if we can talk fritters for a minute. Please. Do you remember the old Red Rooster? Yeah. They used to have the Hawaiian pack. Yeah, they, they have them again. Yeah, but the, do, no, here's the question. Yes. Do they have the pineapple and the banana? No, they do not have the banana. It's just That's the pineapple. problem. They fucked the banana off one day, and then it was no longer a Hawaiian pack. It was just like, well, you had some pineapple. But deep fried banana, very delicious. Oh, very mate, good. we've got Jim in the chats asking, what's a scallop? Jesus Christ. Oh. We're going to have to play a quick video now just to educate flat, it's Jim. It's a flat chip, Jim. It's a, it's a, it's a big <laughs> flat chip. Uh, let's see somebody frying a potato scallop. Here we go. Aussie Bob's homemade potato scallops? No. No, we want to see a proper Chinese fucking takeaway. Yeah, fish and chip. Scallop. Fish and chip potato scallop, mate. Um, so what else was there? I got, uh, you got to get your battered sav, Greeno, of course. Yeah, you got to go battered sav. Good call. Yep. Yeah. All right. This, on this video, they call them potato fritters, but it's the yeah, same Yeah, that's what thing. they call them in Melbourne. Yeah. yeah. And in Adelaide, they call them potato cakes. Don't know what's fuck. You two around the country, it's a fucking nightmare. Yeah. Oh, look, it's another homemade jobby, but okay, you'll get the idea. The thicker you cut them, the less fritters you're going to get. The thicker you cut them, the least fritters you're going to get. It's obviously a Scott, a Scott greener. 
really, really easy. Really easy. Are you easy. sharing the video? Yeah. Am I not showing it? Oh, shit. So all you have to do now is let okay. drip off. Yeah, this is not a real one. We need a, no. a fat deep fryer one. Like Big this deep is the fryer, general. industrial deep fryer. This is the general principle of it. Yeah. Batter, potato, thin potato, really batter, really deep fry, and then you got yourself a fucking really potato scallop, good. and that's what they look like at the end. So, so yeah, crunchy. delicious. They and then you put a good, shit ton yeah. of salt. Shit ton of salt. Chicken salt if you prefer. Um, yeah. I like the plain salt on mine personally. I like a bit of plain salt and vinegar. So I got the chips with plain salt and vinegar, Greeno. Ah, see, I don't like the vinegar on it. Love it. Because if, if you get it, no, because then it goes soggy. Yes. I, when, once I, you want home, I want them soggy. I want them soggy. No, I don't want them soggy. I need the chip fucking crisp when I get it, and then I make it soggy. Oh, you're going to you're gonna hate me because when I order fish and chips now, I put in the fucking order, please make them soft. Oh, no. Yep. I don't I don't want, no. I don't want, I don't want uh, crispy chips anymore. The wife's the same. I went a few weeks ago. Here's another story with a story. I like stories about pinatas. Should have told you about this, Grant. I can't believe I didn't bring this on my show. <laughs> a few weeks ago, this is a proper starting block story, what I'm about to fucking tell you here, my man. So a few weeks ago, I had this craving for fish and chips, and I thought, yeah. you know what? I'm going to go around all of the local fish and chip shops because the one that I'd been going to for years and years, you know, the I won't say the street name, but you know the one. It's the famous <laughs> one all right, in St. Clair. Bill? Does it say yes, deal? yes. Yes, excellent. Yep. So that one has changed hands now. And, oh, no. Yeah, and they used to have the best chunky, soggy chips. Uh, like, And I mean, I really like them soggy out of the bag. Fucking mm, mm, mm. Now they're yeah. crunchy. I don't like fucking crunchy chips. I hate them. Okay. So that's been ruined for me now. And I've been going around, right, this, this was my personal fucking crusade, going around all the local fish and chip shops in expanding <laughs> circles, in an expanding radius, right, geographically, mm -hmm. looking on the hunt, Greeno, for a classic, chunky, fucking old school, old school soft chip, right? Nice. And could not find one. I ended up in, I ended up on Queen Street in St. Mary's. Oh, now. you had to go all the way to St. Mary's. Wow. All That's way a big to St. circle. Mary. That's yeah. a long radius. Right up the end where the meth heads are, you know, that mm -hmm. near the station there. The There's, crackheads and the brothels. That's yeah. right. There's one fish and chip shop there on that corner. And so I thought, you know what? This is my last fucking hope here. This is my last chance. And I walked in. I said, <laughs> the first question I asked her was, are your chips crunchy or soggy? <laughs> like this. <laughs> yeah. And she looks at me and kind of laughs. And she's like, I can just make them soft if you want. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been going on, this, going on this crusade thinking, that, you know, fish and chip shop owners are like master chefs who will refuse to change their menu. No, yeah, yeah, we yeah. cook them crunchy and we do not compromise our fucking principles. I don't know why they're yeah. Russian. Not many Russian fish yeah, and yes. chip owners, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that's what I've been thinking. And then this whole time I realized, oh, shit, I could just tell them to make it soft. So just then, make it soft, yeah. Yeah, so I ordered fish and chips last week, put in the menu Uber, you know, hey, I like my, <laughs> I like my chips soggy. Can you please make them as such? And they arrived... <laughs> And they arrived so, all yeah. soggy, salty, and soaked in fucking vinegar, and I loved it. Nice. Okay, wow. There you go. There's my little story. I like stories um, about pinatas. You didn't finish your, your menu, though. So you got to battered sav? Yes, battered sav. Did you got a seafood sticker? That's what I'm saying. In uh, crab stick. I'm not sure. I got six fish cocktails, Screener. Ah, to go, but that's all right. You yeah. go pieces of fish with the cocktails. I went, I got two pieces of fish, six mm -hmm. fish cocktails. I got a spring roll for the wife. I don't like yeah. them. She likes a spring roll. I don't like I don't like a takeaway spring roll. Me either. I don't like roll. any of them to be fair though. So. Yeah, I don't know. I like a spring roll from like a nice Thai restaurant or something. Mm. But and I make a good home or but by me, my wife actually makes a really good homemade spring roll. Oh yeah. But like takeaway fish chip shop, nah, no good. They're usually like over fried and they're huge. Yeah, and I can the eat the little ones. The little ones yeah. you get at the at the Chinese shops, you know, they're fine. But they're not fine, the big but... fucking thing that's like a hot dog. You know? No, you don't want that. Nah, it's too much. Uh, I'd rather good. have the battered sav green. Exactly. Battered sav or a Kransky. A Kransky. Gotta love a Kransky. A fish and chip shop Kransky is good. Not battered or anything, though. Just the Kransky. No, it's got to be, be there. And it's got to be sitting in the window for like six hours. That's right. And six, try 12. And it needs to be covered <laughs> covered in salt and it's so dry on the outside. Yeah. Right? But juice in the middle. That's right. It squeaks when you bite into it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> 
that's right. Because it's it's been so sucked in moisture on the outside of the fucking skin because like it's been sitting in that cat. display cabinet since six in the when morning. In the Kransky, that's right. That's right. That's it's exactly the, the way you want them. That's the one's been right. sitting there since six a.m. is the one you want to eat. That's right. God, I, I could go some fish and chips right now. I'll tell you. <laughs> I might have to make that run tomorrow. With you order in. <laughs> it's got to be done. Do you reckon any fish and chip shops are still going at quarter past ten at night? What a oh, the dodgy ones, and they're the best ones. No, only kebab. You can only get a kebab now at this time, I think. You reckon I can get a pizza? Mm. You your, your shitty burger takeaway. Yeah, you can still get Maccas and shit. Maccas 24 hours now. You get a donut. Mm. Uh, no fish and chip, though, I reckon. No You're fish probably going to struggle with fish and chip. Yeah, it's a struggle. What are we um, doing, the plugs? Yeah, that's it. We're out of here. Uh, All right. Show's done. Excellent. Tune in, tune in to your show tomorrow. Yeah, why not? If not, nobody else does, so you won't be missing anything. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry right. too much. All right. That's it. See you guys next week. Bye-bye. Bye. We'll always be bosom buddies, friends, sisters, and pals. We'll always be bosom buddies. If life should reject you, there's me to protect you. If I say that your tongue is vicious, if I call you uncouth, it's simply that who else but a bosom buddy will sit down and tell you the